I've had a bit of a problem for the past few weeks. I've started listening to my Spotify Discover Weekly and totally forgotten about it and then it's disappeared, potentially missing out on some lovely bloody bangers. So I decided to fix this using code. Uh, we're going to be doing this in Python and obviously we're just going to be using the Spotify Web API. The problem with this is this can be quite confusing if you have never done much work with APIs before, but I assure you this is not difficult. The documentation for the API is actually very well written and I will talk you through it now. What I would suggest is creating two Python files, one called secrets.py and another called main.py. Main is obviously where we're going to have the main code. Secrets is where we will put our authentication details, which we will get now. So the first thing we need to do is get authorized. This link will be the first link in the description and it walks you through getting authorized. You can either read through this whole thing yourself or I will just walk you through it here. Basically, there are three different ways that we can be authorized. The way that I would recommend getting authorization is by following the authorization code flow. However, this is a fairly complicated process, which I will explain. However, if you just want temporary access and you want to rush through this as quickly as possible, then you can just do this. Go to this link in the description, which is the create a playlist request page. And this actually gives you an OAuth token for doing exactly that. What you'll want to do is press get token. It shows you the required scopes for this endpoint. That means the required permissions that this key will have to give you. you so you just check these two and click request token. You press control and A, control and C to copy and then we can just put this in our secrets.py file. Make a new variable called Spotify underscore token equals and then put in this token. It is very long. Okay, so that is the easy way to do it and this token will expire very quickly and you will need to do that every time that it expires. You can't really automate the process. So if you want to follow the slightly more complicated, but I would say better approach of getting an authorization code, then follow this right now. So here is the authorization code flow. A lot of reading, blah, 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 blah. A big, we have a diagram explaining the flow, but I'm sorry, who has got time for that? So basically the first thing we want to do is actually create an app. So to obtain authorization, register your application. Click on that and then it says to register your app, go to your dashboard and click create a client ID. Lovely. Now it might ask you to log into your account, your Spotify account, so just do so. And then you will probably have no apps here and it will say create app. Um, now I don't know why it says that because in the description here it says click create client ID. So that's what we will do. Don't click create app, click create a client ID. And then we follow this form here. So app or hardware name, anything you wanna do. I'm just gonna call it uh, Spotify tutorial. Okay, app description. Now, this app is going to save the Discover Weekly every week. Okay, so I'll just type that, save Discover Weekly every week. What are we building? We're building a desktop app and click next. Are we developing a commercial integration? No, we are not selling this or monetizing it or anything like that. We're just making this for our own purposes. So I'm gonna click non-commercial and we understand it's not for commercial use. We understand we can't migrate it. We understand and agree with the developer terms of service. Of course we do. Lovely. So that has created the app and we now have a client ID and a client secret. What I'm going to do now is click edit settings here, redirect URIs, you can really put in any URI of your choice. What will happen is we will prompt the user to authorize our app with their account and I'm pretty sure that the only user is just going to be us. We're making this app for ourselves, we're not putting it out there, so we will just do this once um, and then once they've clicked yes it redirects them to a URI and it puts an authorization code in actual URI itself as a parameter. If that sounds complicated, don't worry, just um, all you gotta do is put any URI of your choice in here. It can really be any one, so just click add. By the way, this doesn't even have to be a valid URI. You can just put in, you know, a, a made up one that doesn't exist. Now this, that might seem really confusing, but you'll see why once we get there. 
Okay, now we're done here. Our app has been created and we have our client ID and our client secret. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy and paste those straight into the secrets.py file for now, just so we know where everything is. Okay, so now we move on. So we scroll down here and for the authorization code flow, step one is have your application request authorization. The user logs in and authorizes access. Again, we're the only user, so we're not going to actually put this in the application. We're just gonna do this manually in the browser. So we are gonna send a get request to this URL and we are going to pass in the following query parameters. Client ID, well, we've registered our application, so we can just pass in this client ID here. Okay, so the second query parameter is response underscore type, and this is required and set to code. That is exactly what it sounds like. We have second parameter using the ampersand called response underscore type equals code. Lovely. Okay, redirect URI. We already talked about this. As you can see, it says it must match exactly one of the values you entered when you registered your application. Well, I can just go to my actual application and simply copy the URL I entered. However, it isn't that easy because if we scroll down here and take a look at the example, you can see it's actually URL encoded. If we just search for URL encoder and we will just go to this link here, enter the URL, click encode and there we go. It is now URL encoded and we can paste this in. So redirect underscore URI. There we go, equals, lovely. Finally, we will specify scope. So if you remember in the basic OAuth walkthrough at the beginning of the video, we need two scopes. So what we do is type and scope playlist dash modify dash public. Now, this is a space separated list, but what we will do instead of just a space is do percentage sign 20. Okay, so playlist dash modify dash public percentage 20 playlist dash modify dash private. And there we go. That is the formatted get request. So when we enter in this get request, it should ask us for permissions. And then once we click accept, it will redirect us to the redirect URL we've specified. And in the URL, we'll have a code parameter. But I'm not gonna do that quite yet because that code, I believe, is only valid for a certain period of time. So we'll just get this ready first, step two. And basically in step two, we take the access token we've generated. Now the access token basically says, my Spotify account and this application are allowed to work together. So that isn't an API token or which we need to put in the code. So we have to use that access token, which we will get from this get request. And we will use that to exchange it with an access token by making a post request to this end point. Okay. Now, if that sounds complicated again, don't worry, because it's actually very, very simple. Um, you can see all the parameters and such that we need, and they actually provide a curl command. So we will just copy that and put it over here. Okay, now you might be wondering, what the bloody hell is curl? Curl is a command line tool for transferring data using various network protocols. Lovely. Okay, so that basically means that we can make a request such as this, and get a response back. Now to check whether you have curl, you will just open up the command prompt. You can do that by pressing Windows key and R, CMD, and just type curl. Now, if you type curl and you get a response like this, that means curl is already installed. If not, then you will have to install it. I won't go through that here because it is actually possible that you already have curl installed. If you're on Windows and you have Git for Windows installed, I believe it, you will already have it installed, or if you have Windows 10 version, I believe 1803 and above, it actually already comes with curl pre-installed. If you don't already have it installed, then go and look up how to install it and then come back and we'll be fine. So we have this sample curl command. Now, what does this entail? So let me walk you through this curl command. So we're, so we're invoking curl, obviously, dash H. This means header. What are we sending in the request header? Well, we send authorization as a basic authorization, and then we have this. What is this? This is just the sample um, that Spotify has provided, so just ignore that. But what that actually should be 
is base64 encoded string that contains the client ID and secret ID. It must have the following format. Okay, what the hell does this mean? Well, we have the client ID and see client secret right here. So what you need to do is take your client ID, put a colon, and then take your client secret and put it right after the colon, no spaces or anything. So we have client ID, colon, client secret. Then copy all that, again being careful not to add any extra white space at the beginning or the end. And we need to base64 encode it. So just search base64 encoder and first site that comes up right here. The first time I did this I was accidentally on the decode option here. Uh, make sure that you're on encode. Paste in your client ID and secret in the format that we just went through and click encode. And there we go. We get this in response. Lovely. So that is going to replace this sample thing Spotify has given us here and press paste. Lovely. Okay, next, dash D, grant type equals authorization underscore code. Well, as you can see here, that is exactly how we need it. So we're not going to change that. Dash D, code. Well, this is what we're going to get by running this get request up here, which we will do in a second. And finally, dash D, redirect URI equals, well, our redirect URI. And if you remember correctly, the redirect URI is right here. And we're going to copy it exactly as it is. Okay? Just like so. And then it has a space and then the end point. So the only thing we're missing is this code. And we get that by running this get request we formatted earlier. So how are we going to do that? We're not actually going to do it um, programmatically. We're just going to paste this in the browser uh, and just press enter. And it will take us to this following page. It may or may not ask you to log in, but it will walk you through. It's got our app title and it tells us the things that we have requested to do. So take actions on Spotify on your behalf. We have said that we can create, edit, follow private playlists and create, edit and follow public playlists. Click agree. And there we go. It has redirected us. So whatever URL you put to redirect to is going to pass it. So as you can see here, we have a parameter called code, which gives us this long access code. So we have to be quick because this is a time-based access code. But as I said, this URL doesn't actually have to be valid um, because we're not actually doing anything with this parameter on the website. So we now have our access code and we can go back to our curl and we can fill in the final parameter. So let me just walk you through one more time what we have. We invoke curl and we pass it the header, authorization basic, then our client ID, client secret, comma separated as base64. Okay, then we, we start the body parameters. The first one is grant type authorization code, just default as it was. Then we have another one called code and that is that long authorization code which we just generated via that get request. Then we have our redirect URI, which is the same as the one we used in the get request. Then we pass all this to the endpoint. Okay, so now we can just copy this entire command and paste it into the command line, assuming you've already installed curl. Now, as you can see, I actually receive an error here. Initialization security context failed, blah, 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 blah. So I found the answer to this, as always, on Stack Overflow. Somebody says curl needs a parameter to tell it not to check certificate revocation. We can be confident we're doing that because this is the exact command that Spotify gave us. We don't really need to worry. So we just add in this dash SSL dash no revoke argument and run it. And, and there we go. We get this response. So what the hell is this response? So we'll need to take note of this access code parameter. Also, as you can see, this expires in 3600, which means in one hour. We will also want to take note of this refresh token here, because that is what we'll use later when we are trying to regain access. I'll walk you through setting up automatic refreshing of this token at the end. But for now, let's just get the rest of the app working. We now have our access token and we can access the API. So. We will copy that and now clear all this from our secrets.py. 
and now what I'm going to do is create a variable in here and just call it Spotify underscore token equals and paste this. We'll also need a variable called Spotify underscore user underscore ID. So you can get that just by opening the Spotify app and you can actually just copy it right here. You can also see this if you click account, it is right here, You're just your regular Spotify username. Paste that in as your Spotify user ID variable and we are now done in the secrets file until we want to automate it, but as I say, we'll worry about that later. So now let's go to main.py. Now let's, let's think about what do we actually want it to do. Well, the first thing we want to do is actually find the songs. And we want to find the songs by finding our Discover Weekly playlist. We want to get a playlist tracks or items. And actually, here we are. There is a page in the Spotify API which tells us exactly how to do that. How do we do it? Well, we send a get request to this endpoint. So the packages we will need for now are JSON and requests. We will also import from secrets our Spotify user ID and Spotify token. Okay, and I'm going to do this in a class. I'm just going to call it save songs. Um, and we're just going to define our init function like so. And I know um, how annoying it is when you're watching the tutorial and they just walk through it really fast, but this is all just sort of setup stuff. Um, so just co you can copy this exactly and you can really see what it's doing. So we're importing the packages we need, we're importing our ID and our token. So we are then going to set these as variables. So self.userID equals Spotify user ID, self.spotify token equals Spotify underscore token. So we're going to define our first function and we said the first thing we want to do is actually find the songs. So we define a function called find songs. Right, so what do we want to do? Well, we want to loop through playlist tracks and add them to a list. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. So if we take a look at the API, send a request to this query is going to look like this for now. Now we can delete where it says playlist ID in these curly brackets and then use dot format to pass in the playlist ID. And we can grab that by just going on Spotify, clicking made for you and we want to grab the discover weekly playlist because that is the one that we are going to save. So what we're going to do is not copy the link, copy the Spotify URI. And then if we just paste this here, you see that we get Spotify colon playlist colon and then this identifier. So what we can do is just copy that. And you know, it's probably good practice if we put this in the secrets file. So I'm just going to go playlist underscore ID. So this is the ID of our Discover Weekly playlist. So then we will need to import that from secrets. And to avoid confusion, we should probably call it discover weekly ID because we are also going to have a playlist of ID of a playlist that we create. Self dot discover weekly ID equals uh, discover weekly ID. There we go. Okay. So now we have our user ID, our token, and the ID of our Discover Weekly playlist. So I'm just going to format this like so. Okay, so that is the endpoint of the query that we want to make. All right, so let's actually formulate this query. So we're going to set this to a variable called response, and that is going to be equal to a request. Um, from the requests library which we've imported and it's a get request and obviously we want to the URL is going to be this query variable which we've already assigned the parameters well let's take a look at the API as you can see all these are actually optional parameters but what is required is a header field required a valid access token from the Spotify account service here is the format that you will want to put this in let's do that right now headers equals curly brackets. The first thing we're actually going to do is define the content type as JSON. 
So I'm going to do content dash type colon application slash JSON. Now we're going to type authorization and be careful. This is the American spelling of authorization with a Z. Authorization colon bearer curly brackets and then we're also going to use dot format on this string and pass in our Spotify token. There we go. Okay, that is the request. Um, so we've made a request to the Spotify API and we have said we want the tracks of this playlist and we should get a response in JSON so we can check if that's working. What we'll do is go response underscore JSON equals response dot JSON. Lovely. Then we can print the response and we'll just run this now to see if this is actually working. So to run it, we will just say a equals save songs and then we will call a dot find underscore songs. Let's just click run. Response 200. Now response 200 means okay, that, that is completed successfully. And that is because I have printed out the actual response code, not the response underscore JSON, which we just created. So if we change that and run it again, there we go. Now you can see we get a lot of stuff in response. And let's break down what this actually is, because this is where people get worried. They're like, what the hell is this? But this is actually very, very simple. And the Spotify API explains this as well. So what we get back is a JSON list, okay? And this starts off with the URL of the playlist, and then we have an items list, okay? As you can see, the key items corresponds to the following list, okay? And this list is another list of JSON values. Uh, so each track will have its, will be its own JSON item, and you can sort of think of this almost like a dictionary of key value pairs. And for each track, we have an added at value, an added by, a URL, ID, type, and so on. To just verify this, I can actually see here track one, Elton John. Ah, here is the title, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Well, just to verify, I'm gonna go into my Discover Weekly and as you, as you can see, yeah, that is the first track. So great, that's what we've achieved we've now printed out every single track of this playlist. However, that is not what we want because we want to actually create a list of all the individual IDs. Well, how are we gonna do that? The first thing I'm gonna do is just add some print statements to say what we're doing when. So I'm just gonna say print finding songs in Discover Weekly, okay? And I'm actually just going to print the response because if the response is 200, we know it's okay. Okay, lovely. So now how do we extract all these IDs? Well, you can probably guess we're going to use a for loop. So we want to loop through this entire thing. So what exactly are we going to loop through? Well, we can start by saying we're going to use for i in response underscore JSON. But now what though? Because the response underscore JSON looks like this and it has the following keys. It has the href, and then it has items. That's what we want. We want to loop through everything in this items key. So everything here, okay? So that is all the songs. So if we say for i in response.json items, all right, and just to verify this, I'm just going to print i. But if we do this, okay we still get this and yeah now that looks less confusing as you can see it is actually printing out each individual song but again it's printing out so much stuff we can't actually see what's going on so we need to break it down even further so what what we've got now is we have this whole structure right so for each we're looping through each one of these so for every single song it has all these different things and we want to, we don't want the external URL, so we'll ignore that. What we want is here. The track key corresponds to the following values, okay? And in the track key, we want to isolate the URI because that is actually what is required to add it to the Spotify playlist. We're already in response items and we're looping through every single song. 
So now all we've got to do is I'll just print this just to make sure that it works. So print I and in the song obviously we want the track key and within the track key we want the URI. Now let's run this and see what we get. There we go, we get a list of URIs. Lovely. Okay, but the problem is we don't want to print it, we want to add all these to a list. Let's just make a list here. I'm just going to call it self.tracks equals. I'm actually going to set this as a string because in the request that we send, it's actually easier to just send it as a string of comma separated values rather than the list representation of that. For every song, self.tracks plus equals this and I'm also going to add a comma because there needs to be a comma separated list. So now what we will do is we'll create a string full of comma separated values of track URIs. The only issue here is the final value will also have a comma but nothing following it. And we can just fix this very easily just by saying self.tracks equals self.tracks and we will slice um, nothing minus one. Okay, so it's just colon minus one. And what that means is basically just remove the last character. So remove the last comma. And there we go. So that will now create a list of URIs. And if you really want to verify it, just do self.tracks print. And there we go. So this is the list of URIs that we will pass to the API. Now we need a second function. So we've, we've gone through the songs and we've found the one, we've added them to a playlist. Great. What's step two? Well, step two will be to create a new playlist. Let's make a function called create underscore playlist. And this will, well, create the new playlist, obviously. And if we take a look at the API documentation for this, we can see that we're actually sending a post request to this URL. We're passing in the user ID and we're also setting the following parameters. Name, is it public or not? And so on. So let's do that right now. The query will be sent to this URL, uh, which is given to us. Query equals this and once again we're going to delete this in the curly brackets and we'll add that in using dot format and we want to pass in our Spotify user ID. We now need to specify the body of the query so I'm just going to go request underscore body and this is going to be equal to json dot dumps um, in parentheses we are going to specify a json list again and first one is going to be name. So this is just the name of the playlist. So you can name this anything you want, any string can go here and that will just be the name. But what I want to do is get today's date, the date that we're saving it on and then Discover Weekly because I want this to run every Monday when the Discover Weekly gets refreshed. So to do that I am just going to import another package um, from date time import date. I'm just going to do this in the create playlist uh, function. We're just going to make a variable called today and set that equal to date dot today. Okay. And then to format it correctly, I'm just going to create a new variable called today formatted and set that to today dot strf time. Um, and I want this to be in the format day, month, year um, because. That's how we do it in the UK, and it's it's the right way. Come on, um, so just percentage sign D slash percentage sign M slash percentage sign capital Y. Oh, and I'm getting an error because I haven't put equals. Okay, great. I'll just get today's date, as I say. So we will use that in the name field. This equals today formatted. So today's date plus discover weekly. The rest of these body parameters are all optional but I will add a description anyway. The description can be anything you want so just put anything in there and I'm also going to set this to public. If you want it to be private just do public false but I'm just going to do public true. Okay so that's our request body done. Now we can send the query so I'm going to do response equals requests dot post this time not get 
and this is going to take the query as the URL. We're then going to do data equals quest body. And finally, headers is going to be equal to exactly what we did up here. Really, we should put that in a variable if we're going to use it twice, but who cares? I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so that is the response. So let's just turn this to JSON, just like we did before, equals response.json. And I will then print this and see if it actually works. I'll have Spotify open on the, on the left, just so you can see if this actually works. The playlist should just appear here automatically once it's done. Instead of calling find underscore songs, I'm just going to call uh, create playlist. Now let's click run, and there we go. So it's appeared over here. Uh, the playlist has actually been created. It has the description, which we gave it, and also um, it's given us this response back. So this response is just a JSON list describing the playlist. Um, there we go. So we have we can now find all the songs and copy the IDs and we can also create a playlist. Lovely. So we're really getting there now. So now the only thing left to do is to actually add all the songs which we have saved to this tracks list to this new playlist. So we will of course create a new function called add to playlist. Okay. And obviously, this function will just add all songs to new playlist. So if we take a look at the Spotify API documentation for this, you can see that we send another post request to this endpoint with our playlist ID. And we pass a list of Spotify URIs. So there's one more thing that we should do in the create a playlist thing we should actually return the ID of the playlist we just created so we can use it in this next function. So I'm just gonna return response underscore JSON ID. And if we take a look in this response here, that will just return this ID which has been created for this playlist. And I will also just um, print out so it tells us what it's doing, trying to create playlist. And we'll add a print out here as well, let's print adding songs. Let's make a new class level variable, just call it new playlist underscore ID. Okay, and we will set this equal to in this function, the return value of the create playlist. So that is how we're going to invoke the create a playlist method. Now in this function, we actually create the playlist, assign it to this and then add the songs. All right, so now what should the query be? Well, uh, we are given the URL here in the API. So we want to send a post request to this. And we will obviously get rid of this. We'll do dot format self dot new underscore playlist ID. So that's the ID of the place we want to add to. And we will also pass an optional field which is a comma separated list of Spotify URIs. We've actually already got that because we extracted it from the playlist earlier and we've saved that in the self.tracks variable. Finally, we will actually make the request and there'll be requests.post query and also the headers will be the same as it's been before and I really should have added this to a variable. That should work. So now let's print the response Dot JSON. So if we run the correct function here, add the playlist, obviously this will call the create playlist function within itself. What I will need to do is first actually find all the songs. So we need to, once we've found the songs, we should call the add to playlist function. So self dot add to playlist. Okay, so we will call this as a user that will find all the songs. It will call the add to playlist function, which creates the new playlist by calling this function and then adds all the songs that we got from this function into the playlist. All right, so that means that we will then call um, find songs. So that should actually work. And what I'll do is just put Spotify and trying to create playlist method response of 400. So it's created the playlist 
but we've received the response, a response of 400 when it's trying to add songs to the playlist. Of course, I forgot to add in the final query here, so we just do a question mark with the key URIs equals and an empty list because we added in this in the format, but we didn't put it in here. Okay, so now if we run this, there we go. We get a response of 200. Response of 201, which means it's completed, has created another playlist, so we have two now. And this one actually contains all the songs. The only thing that's left to do now is actually have this run on a weekly basis and also to refresh the authentication code. So how do we request refreshed access? Well, hopefully you saved your refresh token from the curl command we entered in initially. So that was the command which actually got us the initial uh, Spotify token in the first place. It also came with a refresh token. So we need that and we have to send another post request. So we're actually going to do this one programmatically. We didn't uh, do the first one programmatically just because we wanted to get the app up and running quickly. This one we actually want to run automatically every single time the app runs because uh, the code will expire by the next time we use it because our use case is running once a week. So for that reason, I am actually going to delete this Spotify token here. There. Okay. I'm going to make a new file called refresh.py. In the init function, the only thing I need is self.refresh underscore token, which I'm going to import from secrets. Also in secret, I'm going to put, if you remember, in the curl command, we specified our client secret and our client ID separated by a colon in base64. Um, I'm actually going to put that here. So I'm just going to do base64. I'll just call it that and paste that in. Okay. Self.refresh token equals refresh token and self.base64 equals base 64 and I'll just import that here as well. Okay, so this needs to have a function called death uh, refresh and that is just going to make a post request where I'm going to import requests yeah and I'm going to import JSON. Okay, that's just going to make a request and it's going to use following style. So this is the curl command, okay? So instead of typing that in as a curl command like we did before, I'm just going to convert this to a requests uh, dot post request in Python. So how do we do that? Well, we'll assign it to a variable, and um, we'll call it response, and that's going to be e that's going to equal requests dot uh, post. Obviously, the URI I'm just going to put that as an, a variable called query as we've been doing. That is going to be this endpoint we can put that into here so the URL is going to be query okay the data is going to be the following grant underscore type uh, in the API it gives us this is just going to be refresh token so colon refresh underscore token then um, fairly confusingly because we have refresh token here the next uh, key is actually refresh underscore token, uh, but this obviously refers to the token itself, um, which we import from secrets. So that's our refresh token, which was given when we ran the first curl command. Okay, the only thing we need now is the headers. Okay, and this is just going to be authorization with a Z, basic and then our base64 encoded string which of course is our client ID from the app and the client secret from the app separated by a comma in base64. Okay, so that creates a response and hopefully it should respond with a brand new key. So we can just print out response.json, print that out, um, obviously we'll just run uh, I'll just run this here for now. So a equals refresh, um, a dot refresh. 
run and there we go it's responded with a brand new key okay what we should do here then is actually return response and we want to return the access token so we'll slice access underscore token so now that should just respond with this so in the main application what I will do is actually create its own function here and just call it def call underscore refresh okay and that will just call the refresh function from here I decided to put this in its main file because it is not a part of the main set of instructions I, I just like to have things in their own file but we will call it from within here so just call refresh and I'll make a variable called refresh uh, caller equals refresh and we will want to import that so from refresh import refresh also in secrets we no longer import the token because we're going to generate it here okay um, I'll just set that equal to an, so we'll set the token equal to an empty string and then set it down here so refresh caller equals refresh um, I'm just going to say self dot Spotify token equals refresh refresh caller dot refresh because the refresh function returns the access token so that should set the brand new one uh, as this variable here and then we can continue to access it as normal so let's see if that will now work so I just print refreshing token and then once it's been refreshed um, we can then call the next function which is find underscore songs so this function calls find songs and um, which of course you know well instead of calling it here we call it in this function so we want to call this to begin with so we now actually need to replace this Spotify token with self dot Spotify token because previously we were just um, using the bit that we imported but we can't do that anymore so we'll just change that to self dot Spotify token self dot Spotify token and when you hit save hopefully yep the red line goes away and that is fine so hopefully now when we run this this should work oh and we get an error response object is not subscriptable because we didn't convert it to JSON so um, we actually need to do response underscore JSON uh, equals response dot JSON and then we can uh, slice it like that okay so response underscore JSON and hit run there we go so it's refreshing token finding songs in discover weekly adding songs creating playlist boom there we go um, so we've now programmatically refreshed our code so the app will work pretty much forever um, we don't have to worry about manually resetting the code every week. Okay, one thing is remaining. How do we get this to run automatically? So to schedule the task, we're just going to use the Windows Task Scheduler. If you're on Mac or Linux, then you will be able to find similar programs to allow you to do this. But this part of the tutorial is really Windows only. To do this on Windows, we're just going to click Create Task here. And we can give it a name. I'm just going to call it uh, Spotify API Tutorial. Okay, you can give it a description but you don't have to okay so now click triggers and for the purposes of this tutorial I just want it to happen one time I'm just gonna set it to happen in a few minutes time however if I was actually using this program I'd want it to run every Monday so we could do that by clicking weekly okay so once you have the trigger you can then add an action and the action is going to be to start a program and the program we want to start is actually Python in order to do that we want to get the directory of Python you can do that quite easily by just opening up idle and type in import sys and then just type sys dot executable and press enter and that will print out your Python directory so you can copy that and paste that in the script and this is python w.exe it won't just open up a command line window and potentially distract you if you're working on something else it will run in the background and you won't even notice it so the arguments we want to add to this is just a python program and if you remember this was called main.py we want to run the main file which will also 
which we'll call the refresh and secrets. Um, so we're just going to type in main.py and we want to start in. This is the directory that this program will start in. And obviously we just want that to be the directory where our main file is stored. And that is all we need to do for this. So now click OK. And there's also a lot of different settings that you might want to look at. For example, if it misses your scheduled task, then you can have it so it runs again automatically. Um, and all sorts of different settings that you might want to look at here. But that is the gist of it. All right, so I'm just going to set this to run in the next minute just so I can show you that it works. And I'm going to click OK, and the task is now ready. So the program should begin running in five seconds, and we should hopefully see our new playlist pop up just here. And there we go. It popped up straight away, really quickly, and it was completely in the background. Nothing popped up, and that's what we want. So you can schedule out every single week, and it will keep working. And once again, it is a long process to automate something that you can do just like this. You could just go select all, copy, new playlist, create. But what's the point in that if we can spend hours doing it in code, am I right?